This is the final exam from 2023. So I haven't mentioned it in the other ones, but we are in a full in-person uh, year in this case. And so students are taking a normal schedule and hopefully the same schedule as you're taking now. Learning objectives, we really want to cover the entire course. Particle kinematic, kinetics, uh, rigid body kinematics, kinetic, rigid body momentum energy, um, and maybe particle uh, momentum energy as well, and vibration. So we have a lot of ideas in the course, and let's get into it. Uh, we have two sliders. They're connected by a light rigid bar, and they're shown with or move with negligible friction in the slots, both of which lie in the horizontal plane. For the position shown, the velocity and acceleration of A, which is this one at the bottom right, and I'll get my thing to work. There we go. Is uh, 0.8 meters per second. Uh, to the right and 2.9 more four meters per second squared to the left. So you have something happening there. What's the distance SA, SB? What is the magnitude of the velocity of slider B sub B? What is the magnitude of the force in the bar? Lots to co cover in this particular problem. So first of all, draw out a diagram. What are the distances SA and SB? Law of signs. We already know this angle, it's 140 degrees. We can calculate the remaining terms because we have an isosceles, or, as, or we have an isosceles triangle, basically. And you get sine of 20, which is uh, SB over SB equals sine of 140 over L, which is going to be 0.532 meters. What is the magnitude of the velocity of slider VB? Well, here you're going to use uh, a velocity relationship. So you know that these are de absolute dependent motion. And so L is just going to be SA squared plus SB squared minus 2SA to SB, cos of 140. Differentiate once and you, get z you set that to zero uh, because L doesn't change. All of the other terms are uh, do have a term that changes, VA, VB. Substitute everything in calculate all the terms and you end up with VA and VB have the same magnitude but different direction, relative direction. So negative in that sense. I, you can in that in the sense that it's moving down when it moves to the right, uh, B is moving down and to the left. Solve the two equations with uh, two unknowns to find the force in the bar and that's just going to be sum of forces a B. You look at the forces that are applied, you have the tension force, you have uh, the pulling force, which is 80 newtons, and everything is substituted in. You have acceleration A, you have acceleration B. Acceleration B is equal to minus 15.3 meters per second squared. T is equal to 97.65 meters. So you have a wheel of radius 0.21 meters that rolls without slipping. The bar AB, which is this bar on the bottom, is pinned at the edge at point B over here, point A over here. Use the coordinate system specified in the diagram. The line OB makes an angle theta with respect to the x-axis as shown. Make sure, and you're kind of given these hints, and, and really we do try to give you hints that help you. So don't ignore them. Center of the wheel is at the origin of the coordinate system. There you go, right here. Suppose theta is equal to uh, nine or pi over two. Omega is equal to minus two rads per second to K. Alpha is equal to positive 3.5 rads per second. What is the distance to the instantaneous center of the bar of uh, the velocity at point A? So if you look at the diagram, clearly that theta is not pi over two, uh, but it was a way to sort of start out the problem and you're expected to draw it out and look at what it is. So if I look at that diagram right away, I don't know what's happening. I do know that this is an omega of minus two rads per second. And if it's an omega of minus two rads per second, it is rotating in the clockwise direction. So I expect that at that point, uh, the velocity vector at point B is going to be horizontal and to the right. 
And because it's being dragged along the ground, um, what's going to happen is A is also going to be horizontal and to the right. And you're given theta is equal to pi over two, what it, I mean, all those terms are. Now, there are two ways to do this. I, I, you know, if you don't know what you're kind of expecting to see, um, you'd kind of calculate all the terms out. There is sort of an obvious answer to give you right away because you can see from those two red arrows, they are parallel. They are uh, going along in the same direction. If I draw two radii from there, they will never intersect, which tells you that this is undergoing, bar AB is going undergoing uh, translational motion. However, you do kind of should show something here. And here's all the calculations where you do it in a vector form. So velocity at point O is omega of the wheel cross with R O with respect to C. C is down here at the very bottom. And you get 0.42 meters per second. You know, velocity of the B, uh, velocity of point A, B is going to be velocity of the wheel, uh, O plus omega wheel cross with RB with respect to O. Omega the wheel is um, uh, given, that's the minus two rads per second K, and the distance R uh, cos theta, R sine theta clearly it uh, is all going to be R in the I direct, or R in the J direction. Um, and at that instant, you get velocity of B, which is equal to 0.84i. Same thing for velocity of A, substitute in all the terms. And omega AB from the vector calculation and the velocity of A, velocity of A becomes the same. Omega AB is, is immediately tra uh, drops out and is zero. This is a question that you can solve relatively quickly if you recognize what the directions of the velocities are. If you use a, a vector approach, you kind of give yourself a little bit more uh, confidence in your in your results. So often uh, reaction to a problem like this on an exam is it can't be this simple. Um, but at the same time, uh, don't depend on that happening again. Okay, so again, suppose state equals pi over 2 omega all us. Determine the acceleration of point B in xy coordinates at that instant. So you substitute in all the terms, you calculate the acceleration of O, you calculate the acceleration of B, and you do that. And again, everything is referenced to point C. You've got all the terms that you need. So one of the tricky bits about this particular problem is recognizing that because this thing is translating, and so you can see the two uh, lines there, or the two vectors at A and B, there is no normal acceleration on the link A, B, the, the bar A, B. So acceleration of O you can calculate, and that's from the wheel, and it's just going to be alpha cross R. Um, and it also is translating. So the acceleration of B on the bar is going to be acceleration O plus the tangential component of the acceleration, which is 3.36 J meters per second squared. Adding terms together, acceleration A equals acceleration B plus alpha AB cross with rad, uh, the radial di distance A to B, you end up with zero. And alpha AB, because it is going to start rotating upwards and to, uh, upwards and move to the right, will have a angular velocity alpha AB, which is 3.95 K rads per second squared. This Part of the problem is particularly difficult, and it is conceptually difficult. Next question. Uh, circular mass, a uh, disk of mass MA, 16 kilos, and radius R equals point. It's rolling without slip on an incline as shown. The rope is attached to the center of the disk, is wound around a pulley system. At this instant, the pull disk has a angular velocity alpha and angular velocity omega. Ropes and pulley have negligible mass. So this is a problem that kind of goes back a little bit because we have absolute, de you know, pulley dependent motion. Um, given alpha is equal to 7.42 rads per second squared clockwise, find the tension in the rope. So first you draw out your free body diagrams and all the equations are gonna clearly appear here. Mass of B is equal to 36 kilos. Alpha is equal to 7.42 rads per second. Using the diagram shown, you can calculate all the forces in X and Y. You can calculate moments about g, and you get acceleration agx equals alpha r. 
for force of y, you just have one direction on the force and acceleration at ag with respect to x equals th three times acceleration b with respect to y for the kinematics. So six equations and substitute equation three, five into one, substitute all the terms, keeping to the same sort of diagram. Again, please sort of draw your own diagrams, try this out. Calculate all the terms, you get tension is equal to 146.5 newtons. Given for the second part of the problem, mass is equal to 25 kilos, determine the magnitude and acceleration alpha and the corresponding tension in the rope. So mass of B is there, you're given all the terms, um, and I'm trying to save time by just putting that arrow in, and it didn't appear on time. But mass of B, you have all the terms from the previous part, substitute in, and there you go. You get alpha, which is equal to a ratio between the two masses, and the distance is essentially the torques. And from that, you get alpha is equal to 1.3 rads per second squared, and acceleration and tension is equal to 80.5 newtons. Given mass of B is equal to 25 kilo, what is the max or smallest possible coefficient of friction mu sub s min that ensures the disc rolls without slip? First, no slip, uh, force of friction has to equal to this, one half ma r alpha, and also has to be less than or equal to mu sub s times n. So put both together, set an equality between these two right here. And eventually this, here we go. So we just set an equality between these two, substitute in, put everything together, get rid of the masses, yay, everything goes away. And you get mu sub s of min of 0 0.032. Next problem. The next problem was one where we were looking at a uh, uniform slender mass, a bar of mass five kilos and a length two meter which has no angular velocity as end A strikes the ground. So it is vertically dropping. And as it vertically drops, it strikes that ground against the stop with no rebound. It doesn't move. It just sort of snaps down in and it essentially is in that position. V1 in the diagram that you see is 10 meters per second with an angle of 25 degrees, um, just before a strike. What is the magnitude of the angular velocity of the strike? far right after the strike. So you're given uh, an initial velocity of 10 meters per second before striking. Will the bar rotate about A to the vertical position? Show you all your work and say yes or no. There we go. So HA1 equals HA2, MV1 L over 2 sine theta. So it starts uh, before impact. It's all going to be translational. So it's going to be uh, linear momentum times the, uh, the momentum. Uh, afterwards, it's going to be the angular momentum as it rotates about that point A. Substituting in all the terms, you get omega 2, which is equal to 3.2 rads per second. Given an initial velocity, okay, well, it's strike. To avoid falling to the ground, the bar needs to rotate about A with the bar later reaching passing vertical position. Therefore, we need to calculate the minimum initial velocity for bar A to reach that vertical position. After the strike, during the subsequent rotation, about A, energy is conserved. So you have potential energy from one to two. You have kinetic energy, delta T, T2 minus T1. Substitute in all the term. Uh, in order to just rotate to vertical position, we know that the velocity is going to be zero. We know what the initial angular velocity is, and we know what the potential energy uh, is. So we can substitute both of those in, calculate all the terms, determine that omega 2 is equal to 2.076 uh, rads per second. Use that angular momentum uh, from equation 1 to calculate the corresponding V1 minimum, and that's 6.55 meters per second. And now we know that for a 10 meter per second uh, initial condition, it will rotate into the vertical position and bar A, bar A, excuse me, bar A will not fall to the ground. Here's a fun one. Um, so the final question we tend to ask on all of the MIE 100 exams is always a vibration question. And here we have a massless bar, AB, a spring attached to the center of that massless bar, 
and that's CD, K is spring, is 3.3 kilonewtons per meter. The lengths are given as 150 millimeters, total length AB of 300 millimeters, G is acting down, and the mass of B is of 1.5 kilos, and it's just a sphere. We have a forcing that's occurring, 3.5 sine 3T, 13T, and all, all of that's sort of asked. And you're asked to find the natural frequency of the system and the magnitude of the maximum acceleration once the system is at steady state when the natural frequency of the system has died down. And if you remember from lecture, we do talk about that, and it's important to remember that. Show, show the free body diagram. So free body diagram, straightforward. I've got a, a spring force. I've got a weight from the sphere. I have no weight from the rod because it is massless. And there's a reaction force at the pins AX and AY. All the terms are there, uh, forces in red. So I've got uh, friction force. I've got a displacements in blue and the reference position is the vertical position. This has been a bit exaggerated, and I have eliminated all of the static terms. So moments about A, because it is a rotational problem, I know immediately it is not going to be a force balance. It has to be a moment balance. And it's really important to recognize on all of these problems. Remember, we don't spend a lot of time on this. We spend eight lectures, which is actually not a bad number. but we we don't really solve things we just need to recognize and identify how these problems work and so when you have a rotational motion you cannot use a force balance substitute in all the terms you've got all of the balances there you've got all the terms there you end up with this expression and you get theta which is theta m sine omega forcing t and there you go that's you uh that's your forcing term this is your K equivalent, which you're going to use for your natural uh, natural frequency, and F naught, which is going to be K over delta M two to M L. So, in terms of force naught over uh, K equivalent, put in all the terms, you get a uh, two delta M over L, and you get a natural frequency for the system, which is square root of K over four M. Because remember again. You're solving, setting up one equation, making it look the way it's supposed to. And once you've done that, just using definition. Omega n squared for the system is 550 rads per second squared, rads per second squared. So that's sort of the square of the term, 23.45 for rads per second. Magnification factor, F naught over K equivalent over one minus omega forcing over omega n, and it's 1.93. <clears throat> to determine the maximum uh, acceleration, once it's at steady state, you just have omega forcing times theta m, which is going to be 0.4379 rads per second. Again, definition, you need to consider the length of the arm, and you end up with 1.71 uh, meters per second squared. So what did we cover? And I, you know, I, I didn't do this in the other lecture or other videos, but I, I can do it in this one. All of the concepts, as much as we could, were covered in these lectures, or this exam. So you can see question two, different pot, uh, points on a rigid body have different velocities acceleration, which vary continuously. Uh, angular velocity accelerations are properties of the body as a whole, two and three. Points on an object rolling without slip have velocity accelerations that are dependent, that depend on rolling, on the rolling without slip condition. And again, sort of all, all of these terms, as you go through them, you can you can always go back to them. And so this is what, one of the reasons I'm sort of stressing this here is that I want you to sort of recognize where we're coming from and why we're asking these questions. Um, you don't see question one at all. And so question one is uh, not really part of the dynamic concept inventory. Again, as I mentioned in the quiz uh, video, it's really uh, foundational stuff. So remember the dynamic concept inventory, and as much as possible, look at past exams. We're covering the same things. Try and sort of understand what we expect in each of these cases. Thank you, and we'll talk again.